So tis the season, Halloween time, 2024. We're starting off with a marriage between Toby Hooper and Steven Spielberg. You said that this film, watching it again, hit you on another level that was both surprising and deep. Yeah. Um, go into that. There was a moment when um, the family, um, Joe Beth Williams and Craig T. Nelson, have lost their daughter into the, it sounds ridiculous, but she's been sucked into the TV and uh, they can hear her voice and they're communicating with her. And you see the, you see the anguish on her face mm -hmm. and you see it on his where he's just powerless. And I watched it and I was just like, I noticed nuances there that would not have been available to me at eight years old when I saw this movie in 82, seven or eight years old. Um, and as I watched it, I was just like, wow, there's a, there's a real family story going on here. I haven't seen this movie in decades. This is a movie that's been sitting on my shelf for at least, you know, five or six years. And I've always wanted to go back to it and, and ask myself, the fear of the fear of watching an old movie is, is, is it going to, you have to ask yourself, is this going to be as good as I remember it? And you're lucky if it approaches what it was. But a lot of times you're not, expecting it to be more than what what it was and there's a considerable difference watching something like this at 49 you know this close to 50 as compared to watching it as a seven or eight year old as a seven or eight year old you're, you're looking at the spectacle you're looking at the monsters you're looking at the special effects you're going wow you're scared that fucking clown you're gonna have nightmares about that fucking clown for the next decade um, it's going to seep into your, into your subconscious and it's going to fuck with you. But now watching a mother cry over her daughter and a father bags under his eyes drinking. And it's not even, it's not something that's really, um, um, exaggerated in the film. It's not, it's not brought to anybody's attention. It's just, he's hopeless. That shit fucked with me. It fucked with me a little bit. Maybe maybe it's because I, I never had a family, didn't didn't take that route didn't, for for whatever reasons. And we've talked about it in the past. We've talked about um, we talked about the choices that you make and the sacrifices that go hand in hand with that. But watching it in a film like this really brings it home, and it, it kind of forces the hand. And I got to say, this is one of the best movie watching experiences I've had in a long time. I, I was really, the performances are great. The special effects stand up surprisingly well, but it was the emotion. All of that shit wouldn't mean anything if there wasn't a relatable story and two actors selling it in such a way as to make you believe in their pain. Craig T. Nelson and Joe Beth Williams do an incredible job in, in this film, I think. Um, I loved it. It um, I teared up a little bit watching it. And it was because of, of just this feeling of... of there was a there was a weird kind of feeling of emptiness and and sadness of 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 what might happen, and that's a that's a that's a surprising thing when you're watching a movie and you know what's going to happen, and you can still get to that place. I think it's a, you know the, over the last few decades, what one of the big controversies of this film outside of the the curse that we'll talk about in a minute. But what one of the big one of the big controversies is who directed this film. 
was it Toby Hooper, the credited director, or was it Spielberg? Right. Um, yeah. All, all I can say is it doesn't really matter to me. It's it's really the it's really the final product. But I will say this: I don't think that there's anything in in in, in Spielberg's filmography that approaches this type of sensitivity coupled with this kind of sadistic punishment of this family. Um, I think, I think it's a perfect blending of Spielberg's all American, all American family, nuclear family, um, um, his idea of the all American nuclear family and Toby Hooper's need to make them suffer. I don't know that, I don't know that um, Spielberg would have been able to accomplish this solely on his own, even though this is a story by Spielberg and it's, um, he's a credited screenwriter. I think a lot of that sensibility is Toby Hooper's, but, um, I'm really interested. What's your, um, let's go back to an old question that I haven't asked in a while. What is your relationship to this film? What's your history? What do you, what do you know about it? What do you remember about it? Okay, well, watching this film, and of course, I'm talking about Poltergeist. <clears throat> if, if you haven't figured that out already, oh, I'm um, sorry, I rambled for six minutes without saying what we're talking about. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I opened up just, um, <laughs> and I think then before I even begin with that, I think when you're seeing these, the worry of these parents, because I think maybe you're looking at your own past. I'm, sorry, I'm gonna psychoanalyze you and say, oh fuck yeah, it's all there. Maybe you saw it the moment that your parents lost you to, to, to the movies. <laughs> And they saw you disappear into that screen and they say, our son is gone and he'll never return. Yeah, um, it's possible. But I don't think my parents would have wept as, <laughs> as heavily. I doubt. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's true. I mean, not, not, not about you, but I mean, some a lot of people like were raised by the fucking TV. Yeah, yeah. it was um, true. So um, the hauntings are outside the TV um, for some people. My history with the film is just kind of like, yeah, it was just one of those 80s. Mm -hmm. uh, it was one of the 80s horror films, and it wasn't, um, it didn't get a lot of heavy rotation for me. Yeah. Um, so I know about, I know about the deaths. I, I know about the curse. Mm -hmm. I know about that. Um, but now watching it this time, and <clears throat> we've, Having done um, ET earlier in the year, yeah, and having seen that, I'm like, fuck, like, <clears throat> this is very much like a an ET adjacent film. Mm -hmm. um, it even looks like the same neighborhood, doesn't it? It looks like the same fucking neighborhood. They have a fucking similar dog. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's like it's as if they were shooting like side by side. They were. They actually okay, were. I mean, I think well, I think he had just yeah. done ET, and he was going into this, or they, they were doing it like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it looks it. You, Spielberg's fingerprints are all over this. Oh, fucking all movie. over. It. Yeah. Um. um so I, you know, I'm, I'm curious about the production history. Um. Mm -hmm. But then watching it for this, I'm I'm sitting here and I'm watching it. And I'm I cannot shake. Um. The Exorcist. As I'm watching this film, I cannot fucking shake The Exorcist. Really? And I'm like, oh, this is fucking, oh, yeah. In a completely. bad way or in a good way? Um, because if you're, comparing, way. if you're comparing this to The Exorcist, you're going to lose. Well, I, I, well I'm not going to lose. It's going to lose. Well, um, yeah, it's good. Well, the movie watching experience is going to lose is what I'm, is what I'm saying. It, it, I mean, I was, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it was, it was, uh, it was also a contrast. So it's yeah. kind of like if you, if you just compare, then it's like, okay, well, yeah, this is not the exorcist. If you contrast, it's like, well, what's different about it, right? Mm -hmm. Why is this? What makes this its own thing? Um, now, these those two movies are almost ten years apart. Yeah. Um, the Exorcist is a longer film than Poltergeist, but Poltergeist to me feels longer. Um, and if you break it down into like the acts, um, well, 
exorcist, the first act is basically, well, it, it's, 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 it's a mother and her daughter. Yeah. The first act of poltergeist is a family and their, 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 their home. Right. Mm -hmm. The second act of exorcist is basically the thing is there's something wrong with my daughter. The second act of, of poltergeist, which I think is way too long is there's something wrong with our house. Yeah. Then in that second act, experts are brought in. In The Exorcist, it's a mixture of, you have science with religion, so you have the priest who is both a psychiatrist and also, as I said, a priest. Um, in Poltergeist, experts are brought in, uh, science with the paranormal so psychologist slash fucking ghost hunters or whatever right yeah. um the third act of the exorcist is the battle to save the girl the third act of poltergeist is the battle to save the girl um the exorcist is a 70s film about fucking a loss of faith a loss of innocence poltergeist is the exorcist of the eighties, which means it has a little bit of humor. Um, it's a little bit more kind of superficial, mm -hmm. um, suburban horror. Um, and literally like what's buried underneath the suburbs. Um, and it's basically a horror film that is a contemporary of, Fucking, I mean, you've got the Star Wars bedspread. You've got E.T., what we, we already talked about. You've got Ghostbusters coming pretty soon on the heels of this film. Yeah, um, probably two years later. Yeah. Um, so it was interesting to watch it and, and just, like, think of these things. And, um, and it's kind of like... Exorcist, you know, there will never be another Exorcist. Um, they've tried, but there will never be another exorcist. Um, in the same way, I, I like to fuck with timelines right now, there will never be another alien, although they've tried and they will try. Yeah. Um, poltergeist, it's more haunted house than fucking possessed girl. Mm -hmm. um, it'll be interesting at some point to do haunted house shit when we go into like like, what's the difference between Amityville versus this versus paranormal activity? Um, these different, which is very much uh, for its generation. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the take on that um, with with video and all that um, and, and kind of like found footage type of shit. So I was very much just looking at it this way. And, and so it's interesting to see how like um, to hear you talk about how for you it was just kind of like this experience of someone who's almost 50 years old mm -hmm. looking at it and seeing the, the, the pain and the, the, the level of distress over, um, over watching someone's family life or watching the, the loss of that. And I'm, and I'm thinking of like, yeah, like these those little kids on the fucking milk cartons, or that you would get in the um, in the mailbox and it would be like, "Have you seen me?" And it's these kids that you know they're fucking probably dead. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. um, not always. In the um, first forty eight hours, as they say, right? I mean, you don't find them in the first right. forty eight hours. It's yeah, forget it. Um, and 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 it's kind of like that clip of that. I forgot the woman's name. Who was she? Was um, she was? This is not in the eighties. This is more compared to that it's more recent um mm -hmm. she was one one of the women that was kept she was a captive of that yeah. i think his name was ariel castro mm -hmm. and there's a clip of this guy and it went viral and they made all these scoops of it and all this shit. And he's like uh it was a dead giveaway right i don't know if you've seen that clip but he's <laughs> like a little white girl comes up to me <laughs> <laughs> i know something was wrong with a little pretty you know something's wrong with a little pretty white girl wearing some black man's arms yeah um yeah and and you know the that whole thing of the missing white girl mm -hmm. syndrome or whatever um and you know uh, we've talked about this in film it's like 
again, this goes back to the earliest of films, like a blonde child and, and already as it is like in horror films, there's already like sexuality and violence yeah. and all that stuff, but then like kids and the innocence and all that. And it's like, if a kid is in trouble, it's like, fuck and it's the ultimate evil now this ancient thing that's gonna go against the young thing right yeah um the devil's and, in the, and the devil's in the 12 year old white girl the devil's a cold motherfucker. <laughs> right exactly and this girl's kind of psychic yeah. mm -hmm. um and she and the, the film is is supposedly cursed and you know, she develops that actor, Heather O'Rourke develops a mysterious, like sudden intestinal thing. Mm -hmm. And she dies after the third one. And, and Dominique Dunn comes from this. Um, she plays the older sister. She comes from this, um, like well-known family. Her father is screenwriter. Um, her brother is uh, Jack from American Werewolf in London. Mm -hmm. Her uncle is John Dominic. Uh, I mean, sorry, John, um, DeLorean. No, no, no. Um, John, uh, John Gregory Dunn, who, uh, he wrote, um, panic in Needle park. Okay. He was, uh, his wife was Joan Diddy and she worked on that script. And mm -hmm. so the, there's, uh, she comes from this kind of like famous family and yeah. she's murdered like after, like shortly after the making of this film by her boyfriend slash ex-boyfriend she's fucking strangled and um so it's just all this stuff that's like around it and um and it's just the, the creepiness of everybody knows you may not know poltergeist but you know they're here and then, then the part two is like they're back and it's just embedded in the fucking yeah. 80s right um and I was watching this shit late as fuck, um, just trying to vibe, you know what I mean? And, yeah. and I wasn't feeling the the feeling of like uh, the distress of the family. It was just kind of like, to me, it was just this, I was just feeling the distress of the decade. Um, I was just kind of like back in the 80s. So it was kind of interesting and, and, and to feel I feel the, the shadow of the exorcist, but I also feel the shadow of fucking ET and mm -hmm. I feel the shadow of Spielberg. And it was just this weird kind of, um, time machine experience for me. So I, I, uh, although I wasn't necessarily immersed in it, like on an emotional level, mm -hmm. um, I was very much like, Oh, this is cool. Like this is going like, like I haven't been to fucking Shakey's pizza in fucking years, but like, the last time I went, I hadn't been in years and it was just kind of like, Oh, this is fucking weird. Like, yeah. well, this is, there's something cool about it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, so that was kind of my experience, uh, this time around for this film. Um, it, it was, it was seeing some, an old thing that you haven't seen in a while. No, I get that. I get that. See, for me, it was, um, it brought back memories. I mean, you know, I grew up in the eighties. That's the, that's the decade from, from probably six until 16 where, you know, very formative years, very important years. Late eighties, mid nineties are the same for you. So it, this shit's going to come back at you. as like a, like, like a cold, like a, like a splash of cold water in the face to see a husband and wife getting high in the, in the bedroom while their kids are in their other room. Yeah. I remember how, I remember how fucking like, wow, what, what the fuck? And then, you know, he's reading this biography of, of, uh, uh Ronald Reagan. And yeah. it's just like, there, there's so much there that is, um, that's just a fucking throwback to a different time. Notice I didn't say a better time, just a different time. Um, and then filtered through Spielberg's lens, it's a it's a picturesque nuclear family, and um, I mean, if I were to approach this film from a different angle, the the typical Rick Ramos angle, I'd be like, oh, this fucking white family, and you know, mm -hmm. fuck them because you know they they need to be they need to be. Um, <laughs> they need to be shown how bad it is and they need to be tested in this manner. But, um, yeah. I, and then I, you talk about how they were, they were, ha ha they're actually haunted by the, um, 
by the misdeeds of their collective white. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> you can go there. That's that's. Yeah, and you know, it's it's yeah, crazy um, because a lot of people believe that this film is um, the cemetery is not a cemetery; it's ancient Indian burial grounds. That's that's right. what people think. You know, I don't know how that fucking idea got out there, but that's that's what a lot of people believe is the central. Um, I guess the 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 jumping off point for what this family is going to go through, and that you know that's something that is that has that has existed in the culture for for any number of years. But what for me, um, what this really is is a test of the family. Um, I I wouldn't compare. I, if I'm watching this movie, and I you know like I like I recently watched this movie, I wouldn't. I would do everything that I could to get The Exorcist out of my mind because, number one, it's a completely different film. It's a better film. The The Exorcist is a fucking masterpiece. This is right. a great time at the movies. I mean, and and I imagine in a, in a theater with the thrills and the chills and the screaming and with the right group of people who would be afraid, this would this would have a lot of jump scares. And I think a lot of it is paint by numbers. Um uh uh the 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 fucking the thrills coming at you out of nowhere. But there are certain things in this film that I remember and I remember people watching being really disturbed by. And one of those things is the is the the assistant getting hungry going to the kitchen seeing that mm-hmm. steak crawl across the table or, or, or across the breakfast bar and then well, slowly all, picking his face apart what <laughs> yeah first of all mm-hmm. the most disturbing thing about that is that he puts the fucking piece of raw meat just on the fucking countertop without being on a fucking plate or anything like that that fucking bothered me because i'm like you're what, who the fuck does that i don't i don't Sometimes you gotta. Sometimes you gotta let go of the minutia. Sometimes you just gotta run crawl with the, the ridiculousness plate, of it. Steak, have it crawl off the plate. <laughs> yeah, this thing has been fucking defrosting in his fridge. It's fucking bloody. That would have made for a much more difficult shot. You gotta. You gotta throw caution to the wind and just shoot some shit. You know. <laughs> fucking animals! You don't put your fucking steak on a countertop like that. Yeah, but. But well, anyway, um, but I can always go back to the old hmm, fucking white people and their weird shit. I can, <laughs> I can always excuse that. I, I have that bullet in the chamber. It's always there for me. Yeah. yeah I always do it. Uh, you're red, locked and loaded for that shit. Um, <laughs> the face picking thing was cool. Yeah, um, wasn't it? It looked fucking, I mean, it looked raw and rough and fucking love, like, unsophisticated but mm-hmm. you would tell it was obviously it's a practical effect and yeah. um, and it just looked fucked up um, oh, yeah. and it and and it was cool it was really cool to see that it was cool and like, it was and that that's one of those things where it's like that had to have been a hooper thing i don't think i don't think spielberg could have went there with it i don't think spielberg would have taken it to that level and and that's a that's a chainsaw moment you know, that's that's where you know this is a director that has that that kind of sensibility. And uh, I think I think it uh I think you can make the argument that this is a, a co directed film, Spielberg and Hooper, but the Americana is definitely Spielberg. The ugliness oh, yeah. of it and the, the brutality of it and um that weird fucking cavity at the end of the film that the children are being sucked into. That's Hooper. That's yeah. Hooper, man. I mean, there's shit in there that, that is, I don't think this, I think that I don't think I don't want to underplay either of their contributions to this film, but I don't think the film would be as good as it is without both of them bringing their sensibilities to it. I think, I think, Spielberg has, and we've talked about this, the Americana and the sweetness and um, part of the problem that we had with E.T. was how was how um, uh, safe it was and how um, obviously uh, nostalgic and Americana as, as, as it is. Oh, his, you mean uh, Spielberg's commentary on um, on the nuclear family? And AIDS? <laughs> 
Yeah, basically. Um, this, this is a little bit more brutal. This family suffers. But I don't think, I don't think it would work for me if it weren't for the, the pain that you see in both Craig T. Nelson and Joe Beth Williams. I mean, you, you, it's palpable. I think it works wonders. I think, um, I really don't give a shit about those kids, but to watch them suffer over that, that is what really hit me. I, I don't give a kid, I don't give a shit about a kid being sucked in the TV. I don't care about a kid being pulled into a fucking tree. I mean, it's, it's cool. It looked, and, and all that shit looked cool. Even now, um, 40 years later, the practical effects in this film are amazing. But it's really the emotion, it's the emotional loss and the suffering and the pain that these parents are going through that makes this film something that I gravitate towards. And I, I watch it with that sensibility of, 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 um, of wondering. You know, you watch a movie and... I don't know if you do this. I mean, we've talked a little bit about it, but I, you know, I, I kind of see myself in the movie and I play the, I play the roles and I start to, I, you know, uh, it's not necessarily a conscious thing, but I find myself doing it over and over and over again. Um, you imagine you do it yourself, when you're watching the film. I do it when I'm or, watching or the film. After. No, it's, it's usually, that's how I can, that's how I find myself tearing up is that, is that I'm seeing it while I'm doing it, but while I'm watching the film, um, I see myself in it, and I, I, I imagine those as things happening as the protagonist. Yeah, um, and you that's, start that's to wonder. What's that? I said that's really interesting. That 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 kind of that kind of illuminates for me, like maybe why certain films it's mm -hmm. like if you don't do that does the film not work for you you know well i think i think i can and we've talked about this in the past where i, I think i can look at a film and i can see the quality of the film making it's it's the thing where we said it's not a good film but it's well made and i can look at something i can and i can be captivated by um what's on that screen and what the director is trying to convey but the ones that really make a difference is when you start getting into the mindset of the characters, whether good or bad, whether it's, um, in this film, it's the pain of a lost child in taxi driver. It's the sense of, of, of God's lonely man and being that I think, I think we've all been there at some point in our life. The fear is whether or not you stay there. Um, the self-destructiveness, but also the, the outwardly punching. And I'm not talking about just the boxing, but the, 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 the beating the shit out of everyone around you in Raging Bull, the, the sensibility of not being able to run away from your past or who you, not even your past, but who you are in Unforgiven. All of this shit, as I'm watching it, I imagine that part of me that uh, is being dramatized on the screen. And I think the ones that really, the films that really resonate are the ones that I'm afraid, I'm afraid of what they say about us as a species, but also me in particular. So I was watching this thing and I was like, wow, I mean, you know, um, I'm very close to my family. What if, well, at least my, my immediate family and to some degree, you know, some of let me clarify that some of them as ridiculous as it might sound part of what makes this experience, um, exciting, captivating, emotional is to wonder how you would deal with the events that are being depicted. Would you mm -hmm. be brave enough to, would you be brave enough to, to, to combat this? Could you, could you make the sacrifices necessary to, to save your family? And, um, that's why the mother, you can see the anguish of, of a mother losing her, her, her youngest, 
but you can also see the anguish. And a lot of people don't notice this, but when you watch Craig T. Nelson, there is a hopelessness there. There is a there is an inability to do anything. He's he's weak. He's very weak in this film, and he's not. He's a big. Um, how they call strapping motherfucker, you know, he's a, he's a formidable guy. And he just looks like somebody who, there's a hopelessness because he can't do anything to protect his family. And he slowly starts to realize that he is in part responsible for what has happened by no, by no, by no, um, um, conscious action on his part. But all of this shit is because of the choices of his company. And I just I just thought, I mean, there's a lot of levels. And it worked for me beautifully because of that. Um it's a it's a basic B movie Roger Corman type Roger Corman type um exploitation flick, but it's done with a budget and a sensibility that um elevates it from that type of filmmaking and uh i really enjoy it because of it what about you know what about I, you i got into the the the, the third act is my favorite once they bring in uh zelda, zelda Ruben. Ruben. yeah she's great <laughs> yeah i mean she's she's so much of the film to me mm -hmm. in the same way that the the little girl is like the look yeah it's just her look is yeah. so much associated you know it's her in that tv um zelda rubenstein has the fucking lines she has the it's her in the flash with the flashing lights in the room and she has just this like she's such a small woman but she has such she's so much so larger so much larger than life mm -hmm. um she's comedic but at the same time she's like forceful um the fucking tennis balls with the numbers on them and and this these kind of like weird little things that she does and she's gonna throw it in and it's gonna fall out from the ceiling and, um it, it's she keeps changing like what she wants them to do and they're like i thought you fucking said this mm -hmm. like no and she's just like just fucking listen to me you know um, yeah. i i loved her performance um i forgot how like how much I like her fucking performance. Um, to me, it's all, it's, it's all about the little girl, the TV and this woman. Yeah. Um, obviously the family, the house, uh, the parents, um, it was just to me, those kind of like those takeaways, the stuff that you put on the poster, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and really with the flashing lights, um, that's what really took me back. And, yeah, the struggle to save that little girl and in such a different way than, I mean, I can't get rid of th this time around. I couldn't shake the exorcist thing. It was just there. Yeah. Um, well, like I said, and, once you, and, once you get something in your head, I think we, we talked about that in a, in a discussion of another movie. Once you get something in your head, it's, it's damn near impossible to get away from it and it's going to affect the screening. And, and I, is it fair? Probably not, but, None of that shit matters. Um, you you saw something you saw in it one of your favorite films, if not one of the top five films in your canon. The, the things that you go back to, something that affects it's you. One, it's it's one that I've. Uh, mm -hmm. It's one of the films that I've seen the most. In addition to being one of my favorite films, because yeah. those are different. Um, and this goes back to that whole idea that I've I've talked about a number of times in the past. Um. You can watch a movie, and it can be a well-made movie, a good film, but if you've seen that film somewhere else done better, you're not going to be able to. You're not going to be able to escape that from your psyche. At the same time, I, I, I wasn't like, "Oh, this is just a fucking like." This is mm -hmm. just The Exorcist not made as well. Yeah. Um. It was like i said earlier i think it's a version of the exorcist but for the 80s yeah. um and i think it's different enough um that it's 
and it has its own iconic shit. It has its own history. It has its own flavor. Mm -hmm. Um, I just, uh, I feel like I just got a different, uh, perspective on it this time by thinking about the exorcist. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's interesting that the idea of like, that makes sense that like when you're reading a book or you're watching a movie, um, that you would, that's the whole point. Like you put yourself in the position of a yeah. protagonist, right? Um, mm-hmm. I don't think that I do that though for films when I'm watching the film. Okay. Um, it, it, it's just interesting like to, to hear different people's um, process, I guess. Um, because I, cause then that leads me to ask you like, are you doing it for, do you do that for both of the parents or just, Craig Nelson or do you do it for the mother or does it switch? Um, it's good. It's a back and forth I, kind of thing. It depends on whether, I mean, and that's the thing that's, that's where the camera goes. Scene? Hmm? Okay. It, it's where, it's what the camera is seeing. And, um, you know, I see something and then he's in the background and I see those, I see those bags under his eyes. I see him sipping that beer. I see that, that, that slumped over. I mean, there's a big difference between who, the character is at the beginning of the film and later on when when they have the paranormals coming in to talk and he that that first scene of him talking to the the psychiatrist at the it would looks like uh not ucla but you know one of those spots and you're sitting there and you're like he's a beaten man he's a hopeless man and 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 whether right or wrong there are certain cultural expectations of of us, mothers and fathers, and you know, you, you get a glimpse of it where where he gets upset when when who who disciplines the child, and she's like, well, they're they're more afraid of Stephen, but and he's like, oh, that's not fair. That you know, I've never hit her in yeah. my life, I've never, right. you know. But it's right. it's a very, I mean, you, you would go on the defensive at that point, but it's it's that level of exasperation, that that sadness, that I can't do anything, you know. You know, this guy wants to beat the shit out of everybody in that room because he's powerless in trying to in trying to save his daughter the one thing the one fucking thing that he's expected to do protect his family he has failed at out of no yeah, and he sells of, people houses yeah he, he sells the whole idea of these neighborhoods and it's like this shit is a lie yeah. at this point yeah and, the, and the, it's his company that fucking did this yeah but he doesn't know that he doesn't He's not aware of what's going so on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's, uh, you know, that, that moment of indignation where he's, he's grabbing his, his boss and screaming at him. And it's like, you, you, you fucking, you move the headstones. You, you, you left the headstones. You, 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 you move the headstones. You left the bodies, but you move the headstones. You built on that. You didn't, um, it, it's a fucking creepy moment. And it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a not a creepy moment, but it's a sad, and um, it's it's a very telling kind of <sighs> slam on capitalism, I guess, where it's like this is what companies do. This is you know the bo- the bottom line is the dollar, and making sure that profits are at at their maximum. And, you know, you and I go back and forth, and we, we probably sound like, we don't even sound like socialists. So, you know, some right-winger who's listening to this, you know, there are a couple of fucking commie pinko bastards who want to, you know, um, couldn't be farther from the truth. But we're not, we're not of that mindset where these motherfuckers should just be allowed to run rampant and do whatever the hell they want. And in a way it's pointing a finger at that. I don't know. I don't know if Spielberg is because Spielberg seems like too much of a, of a boy scout for that kind of thing. And I don't know what Toby Hooper's politics were, or maybe this is just something that comes out of, uh, uh, storytelling and a need to, to villainize somebody, you know, I don't know. It's Scrooge. It's fucking, uh, it's just, it's fucking, it's a wonderful life. It's, it's, it's not, I don't see it as this like super articulated thought out, um, critique of like the system. No, I just think that it's kind of like, Oh, well, greedy people who are, um, they don't, they're not looking out for their fellow men. You know but, what I mean? That, like, um, that's kind of that. 
that's kind of the thing that I've always wondered where it's like, maybe, maybe that's more pronounced because it's something that's just de facto the desire for money, the business is built on the idea of maximizing profit, regardless of what it does to the public. And, uh, you know, this is not a political film, but if you look at it from that, from that perspective and you dig a little bit deeper and you're forced to rewrite that story, or at least not rewrite it, but fill in the gaps that are being, that are there. Number one, they knew what they were doing. They, they were building on a burial site and it saved them money to simply move the tombstones. Um, that's, I don't know of anybody who watched this movie then or watches it now and says, oh no, they wouldn't do that. They wouldn't do that. Everybody almost you mean, to, meaning they wouldn't do it as if like no one is capable of doing that like in life. You mean like they wouldn't do that as like in, that? As in corporations wouldn't do that. They right. would go out of their way to, to make sure that that was taken care of and, and these people were moved. And you're sitting there and you're like, no, those yeah, motherfuckers would do it. Like Chris Rock had a great joke where he said minimum wage is it's, it's a, it's a legal standard. It, it means it, if they could pay you less, they would, it's just illegal. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. it, it, and it comes, it really does come down to that. It's like, it's, do you trust these companies, this big business, this is not a political film, but politics can be brought into damn near everything. And the fact that it's Americana and, you know, it's the and have it's and it's the have nots. And it's Reagan. Yeah. And it's, it's 82. It's Reagan. It's the great communicator. It's all that bullshit in us hearing how great um, we are and, you know, this boss, this yeah. uh, James Frank, I think, is the Milton, character. Huh? Milton Friedman, um, one of the advisors to Reagan, basically libertarian fucking mm -hmm. icon, is like a company has no responsibility to society. Its only responsibility is to maximize profits. Mm -hmm. That's it. Um, I mean, like, it, there's a connection there between, um, there's a connection between this film and even Jaws. When mm -hmm. you think of the, the city managers and um, city officials who are with the business aspect of it, it's like, well, um, these Martha's Vineyard type of um, mm -hmm. towns, uh, sea towns or whatever that are, uh, that get tourism for the season, like that's how they, that's how they survive. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, even that, like there's a difference between like some, uh, a company that's doing exploitation and just, um, which on, I mean, in, in the economic sense, like just with, within the system, every worker is exploited, um, because of their, the profits made are always are never equal to the, the amount of work that the person is doing and the person what the person is getting yeah. um, in terms of that exploitation but like um, in the jaws sense it's not necessarily we want to fuck people over but the idea that we are willing to ignore uh, this massive threat including a massive threat that's um that is related to our survivability, not only physically, like literally, but also in terms of uh, our survival financially. Um, kind of co like I, I said when we did that episode, kind of like with COVID, it's kind of like, yeah, there's a threat to people by keeping um, certain businesses open, but like, what are you going to lean on? You're going to, are you going to lean on like, well, we're going to shut down if we shut down, or are we going to fucking like, take the risk and, and stay open. Even if by staying open, we can actually fucking end up shutting down anyway because everyone gets sick or everyone gets eaten by a shark. Um, or one person gets, or enough people get eaten by a shark and then we get enough bad publicity that then we're, we're forced to shut down. Um, then you get into like, well, or how do we keep this quiet? How do we, mm -hmm. you know, how do we cover things up? Um, 
so I mean, the, there is that motive. The profit motive is yeah. is um, does exist in the Spielberg Spielbergian fucking mm-hmm. universe, you know. But um, does it exist because he's making a statement about it, or does it exist because that's the world that we live in, and it's just it's it's part of the fabric of storytelling. It's part of the thing about understanding that corporations run in this matter. I mean, you go back to I mean, it's it's Fight Club. How much? How much are they willing to lose in lawsuits before a recall is instigated? It's that kind of thing. It's like, you know, the cost of the recall versus what they would pay out in in premiums. I mean, it's it's fucked up, but it's real and it's honest and it's there. And even someone like Spielberg is it'd be impossible to um ignore. We talked about Jurassic Park a few months back. That's a statement on consumerism and capitalism. It's it's a it's a matter of it's a matter of giving the people what they think they want, regardless of how dangerous dangerous it is to their to their well being. Um, yeah. and it's and it's there. It's in the fabric of society. It's who we are, and um, it's real easy to make that the villain. While at the same time participating in the in the in the villainy of it all, I mean, it's it's product. It's all fucking product. Well, it's, it's, it's all bullshit. It's, it's bad for you, right? No, go ahead. Yeah. I'm sorry. Well, uh, from from this where we've gone into this, it's kind of like well, um, the 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 ghosts or whatever these entities that are haunting um, the the i mean obviously the main the big baddie or whatever that's like takes the little girl that um that's different but like these spirits are not even the villain in the film no um they're victims yeah you know um the spirits are the conditions created to upset the spirits um right i mean like the shark is not i mean the shark is written as the villain but it's kind of like the shark's just being a shark I mean, even though supposedly it's like endowed with this like vengeful fucking like singular thing of like i want to attack in the same way a kid at work i'm fucking with timelines again we were talking <laughs> about alien romulus and he's like he was really interested as was i in and we'll get there um yeah. in the uh in the planet in that mining planet because he's like getting attacked by aliens is the least of their worries. Like it's worse to fucking start working at that place. You know, um, we're going to die no uh, matter what it's, it's the whole, you know, we're going to die. At least we fight our way out. It's, it's, uh, you know, die on your feet or live on your knees. It really, it, it, you know, and that's, that's cliche ish to a degree, but it's very honest and real about the world that we live in. At a certain point, you have to, you have to come to terms with what you're up against. And it's, it's an ugly truth about life. And I, I, I like this film a lot. I really enjoyed this film a lot because it, it has the thrills. It, it, it was a thrill ride for me. But at the same time, it was an emotional attack that I wasn't prepared for. And when a film can combine those two factors and get me in a way that is not, um, I would say that, you know, to, to use children and put them in danger the way this film does is very obvious and very, um, it's just obvious. I mean, Grimm's fairy tale. I mean, it goes back to the beginning. Like mm-hmm. the children are, that's the threat. Like yeah. everyone's afraid of that something's going to happen to the most innocent. You know, that's mm-hmm. why it's like children and animals, right? Yeah. Um, but as as much of an asshole as it makes me out to be, or or uh, uh, reveals me to be, that's not what bothered me. What bothered me is watching the parents suffer over their children. Yeah. And I think, I think that comes with age. I think that comes with an understanding. And it's, it's, it's watching your parents, it's watching your mother and your father and the drama that I've had with them over the last few months. It's, it's watching, it's watching their disappointment with me, with my sister, with fucking life, with, with everything. Yeah. 
<laughs> with this fucking dog. <laughs> Everything. Yeah, it's coming out of that screen. It's like it's and but it, there's a when a, when a film is able to go there with and and admittedly, let's be fucking upfront about this. Maybe I'm attributing too much to a fucking roller coaster ride good time summer movie. There is that. It there 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 is the baggage that you bring to it. It is what you put on sure. to the movie watching experience. Um, but I think there are certain elements of telling a story that resonate with all of us. And it's it, number one, how well is that story told and how re- number two, how relatable is it to your life? And um, I don't, I don't recognize the world that they're living in as far as anything that I've experienced, but I understand the loss and I understand the sense of, of hopelessness and, and the sense of helplessness, not hopelessness so much as helplessness in being able to control the situation. And that, that to me is what makes this film more than just a summer thrill ride. Um, for what is on that screen and the abuse that this family is forced to endure it was very it was very real and it was very honest in what i believe something like this would actually do um i know it sounds ridiculous but it 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 seems like something that could really happen and i don't believe in that shit i'm not a subscriber to to spirits and ghosts and none of that but as it is depicted on the screen, there is what I feel to be an honesty in the storytelling that makes it possible for me to um, to sell out to it, to to grab onto it, and to imagine um, whatever well, whatever I subtext mean, I bring to it. You know, sure. I mean, and and to me, it's like it goes back to. Uh, I I tend to like zoom out, yeah. um, and I'm seeing like okay this the again the loss of innocence and all that stuff that we can obviously we can place that like with all this hindsight, but you know the loss of faith, loss of innocence of the '70s with the <laughs> Exorcist. Yeah. This is the suburban horror. Um, fucking you know they they're staying at a motel. And then they take the TV outside. He puts the TV out, yeah. outside and, and closes. The, and it's kind of like, um, the, I mean, there's definitely a commentary there. I mean, like whether it's MTV or cable or VHS or all of the things that are, um, you know, th- this is also the time period that like pornography is coming into the home. Mm-hmm. Um, this is also the time period of satanic panic, which I, I'll, I bring up anytime I get the uh, opportunity um, and I create those opportunities as well. Um, sure. It's like, this is the time when it's like the family is under attack um, from all of these pop cultural mm-hmm. uh, like sources. Um, people are afraid of, again, ki- the kidnapping of children, the uh, like child sex abuse of children, serial killers, fucking, um, you know, all this other stuff. And, and the idea is, I mean, that, that moment when the son gets in a cab and the dog gets in the cab and the son fucking leaves. Yeah. And I'm going like, Whoa, like that's that, that was kind of trippy to me. Yeah. Um, it, instead of like, even like, okay, I'm going to take my son to grandma's house mm-hmm. or whatever type of thing. Um, he gets in a fucking cab. I know it was weird, um, wasn't it? I mean, but that's also like, this is like, that's also our generation of the latchkey of like, yeah. kind of like, well, like, well, the parents are at work, like you're, you're out doing, doing your thing, you know, I'm drinking from a water hose, you know? Um, <laughs> well, I think that's what works you know what for I mean? the, like, yeah, I think that's what works for the film is that it's, uh, number one, there's a nostalgia aspect to it, but it's very true to, um, it's very true to the world that we grew up in. I think. I think there is that that yeah. sense of the latch key. That, that, yeah. I mean, I, it's it's so weird I'm because I'm on <laughs> your fucking cuts, you know. I'll throw some dirt on it, you fucking pussy. Um, the dirt was already on there. <laughs> but just to watch, just to have a movie open up 
with the Star Spangled Banner. It was, was it Star Spangled Banner? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, until you see something like this, I can't imagine somebody 15, 16, 20 years old watching this movie going, why are they playing the Star Spangled Banner on TV? And why is it going Would to... Would they even know what that is? Exactly. People today have no idea that right. TV went to sleep. What the fuck? What's he holding in his hand? Yeah. All of that shit. <laughs> I mean, th- th- this is such a weird, this is such a weird throwback to what we grew up with. I remember TV going off the air. I, the only reason I went to sleep on the weekends was because, well, shit, TV's done. I I didn't have a VCR, so I, I got to go to sleep now. You know, I, I wasn't going to stay up reading. <laughs> it was I was just a kid back then. I mean, it was like there, there was no, even the UHF channels went off. It wasn't until cable came into the picture where now you're going 24 hours a day. And it's like, I go to my mom's house right now and there is, the TV is always on. And I can come to my place and it's like, whatever I want, I can stream. So it's not the mm-hmm. world, the, the, the world of poltergeist 40, 40 years ago, 43 oh, years gone. ago, it's, it's, it's completely gone. It's a completely well, now, different, weird world. Now the dad would collect everyone's phone and yeah. put it outside of the home. So, yeah. um, she would get would sucked into his. the phone. She would get sucked into the yes, phone. Yeah. Sucked, yes. She would get sucked in. I mean, and she's already sucked into the phone. Yeah. We're all fucking already sucked into the phone. So it, it's, um, it's interesting to see again, like I, I referenced earlier, like, and and we should at some point we'll, and we'll look into that where it's kind of like this, you know. This is also like video drone shit, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Um. This is the the where you're bringing in these things into your fucking house. You're bringing in these basically these go. You're what you're bringing in ghosts in your yeah. fucking house that are the ghosts of celluloid. Um. You're bringing in, you can bring in porn now on video. You can bring in fucking all this straight to video shit. You can bring in fucking, um, you can record yourselves now at home. Yeah. Um, not just like with the old, like old film, like the Bruder type shit. No, like with camcorder. Mm-hmm. Um, camcorder, and, that's a fucking foreign idea as well, though. I mean, it's, it's selfie sticks yeah. you know it's even that i don't know even that and no. and so like well now it's drones you know yeah. and um so then it's kind of like um paranormal activity the camera is always on in your mm-hmm. house and it's there to capture like your house is so fucking abandoned the home is so abandoned that um now it's almost like you have to create movement in it in order to feel like a house yeah um, because otherwise it's just like, there's nothing there. Um, so it's like the haunting of it actually makes it feel more lived in, um, than anything else. You know what I mean? Like, um, oh, yeah. it's, and it's also, it's fucking surveillance footage, all of that, that shit. Um, and like, is the ghost kind of like fucking stop watching me? Um, but the humans are used to it. You know what I mean? Like, um, so it's a totally different thing to sit here and look at that shit and to be like, the concept of a girl getting sucked into a TV sounds very, very quaint now. Um, but it makes sense that it's kind of like, I mean, my grandmother at one point probably believed that the TV was an instrument of evil. Um, because of her yeah. like age and generational, um, like her father was born at the end of the civil war, yeah. literally, um, like in that year. Um, and my grandmother was born basically at the turn of the century. Um, and so like she was raised by someone from a wild West mentality. Yeah. Um, and so then, you know, you pair that with, you know, keep going through the generations. And, and, um, and I mean, that's a big, like, that's weird to, for me to think about. That's weird that, like, that her 
father was um, basically a fucking cowboy. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. that's weird. Um, and that, that that's so close, even though it's far away, that it's by proximity, right? Um, but then, like, a girl getting sucked into the TV sounds fucking... Um, sounds like i said quaint it just sounds like something that like turn off the tv before you fall in type of thing like but at this point it's kind of like everybody's fucking plugged in or everybody and it's and it's plugged in with or it's wireless you know yeah it's all about the phones um and then it's all about fucking the next one is going to be the uh the neural link fucking um the chip in your fucking brain. So that's where um, we're going. That's where we're headed. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it, it's interesting to, to see it from that perspective and to be like, um, you know, and of course I'm watching it at all. I'm watching it on a screen, um, sitting on a couch, um, fucking watching, a girl fucking get sucked in and I hear my intention is to get sucked in. Every time I watch something for this show, it's like, I want to fucking, <laughs> I want to have a mixture of this and video drone where I'm fucking like merged with the fucking thing. Um, so that I can come back and tell a tale so that hopefully, you know, all these people can compare it to their fucking immersion. Um, it's very strange. Well, you really start breaking cool. down. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I said, but it's cool. Yeah, well, when you really start breaking down entertainment, whether it's uh, music or, or literature, cinema, it's really about how invested you are and how much of that you pull out of it. And, you know, but it's, but it's also about how much you go into it, <clears throat> how much of yourself you see how you would handle similar circumstances. And a lot of people want to make themselves to be the fucking hero, but if you're honest, you would be just as frustrated as these parents. Of course. And you would be at a loss of what to do and feel like, who do I turn to? Who do, you know? Because if somebody came, if somebody brought this fucking story to me, I would say, you're fucking nuts. You're out of your mind but it's happening to them. It's, it's that, it's that balancing act of, of supernatural reality. And I think a film like this, um, it's a haunted house story. It's a ghost story. It's a, it's a, what if it's, it's a, what happens to us when we die? Um, and you can go into all kinds of religious implications on that. But at the end of the day, it's the, it's the base problem. What happens when these things come back to us? Are they, are they vengeful? Are they angry? Are they confused? Because as you're watching this movie, you never get the sense of what, what these things are. They're dangerous, but you never know. You don't, you don't know if they're, if they're evil. It's implied. It's like what we said about the shark. The shark is just being a the shark. These spirits are just being spirits. Maybe they don't know what they are. Maybe they don't know that they're dead. Maybe they are being manipulated. How is that different from, you know, us going to work every day? I mean, you can, there's so many different things that you can, you can read into it or that you can pull out of it. But I think at the end of the day, um, not to be, not to be dismissive of all that, the thing that sticks with you um, is the exorcist comparison. And for me, it's the helplessness of the family, mother and father. Um, and you'd have to go into a deeper psychological analysis of of how how hopeless and helpless you feel about your own life beyond just a family. Um, that's the great thing about films is that you, you, there, 
they are, they exist on so many levels, and a dream can be yeah. so much more than what it's obviously said. What 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 is obviously being said? There's usually so much more to it, and uh, there's definitely more in this film. In the films that we've talked, and as we continue to go back through our our um, our examination of uh, ten years of doing this show, it's very it's very enlightening to know who we are today versus who we are when we started doing this. Yeah. It, it, certain things stay the same, certain things change, but yeah. it's always personal. It is. Has to be. Otherwise we wouldn't, we wouldn't still be doing this and we wouldn't be looking forward to more years to come. That's a, yeah, a strange ride. Yeah. Very strange. Anyway. Thanks for being lost in. <laughs> Let them know who we're. Uh, let them let them know who we're thankful to. Would you? Buymeacoffee.com slash watch Rick Ramos. This one goes to Alan Lamberg. Thank you, sir. Till next time. Get lost. Connect. Go in there. Take the deep dive because you fucking sucked in anyway. Might as well do it on your own bullshit. <laughs> Just turn that TV off. Live it. Thank you very much. Bye bye.